There we go. Hello. Good Welcome. morning. Welcome to this did we this day's oh my goodness. Day, day number <laughs> five of quarantine. <laughs> That's where we're at. Day number five. It is Friday, and if you are watching live and you're in the chat, take a minute just to say where you're watching from. Hello from New Jersey, That's Georgia, I mean, Utah, Connecticut, Florida, yeah, Ohio. Welcome. We're so happy to have you guys here. Today is Friday, and we have something fun prepared for you. It's not our typical schedule with a science demo and then a math lesson, and but we are still going to do fact or fiction and ready, set, draw, because those are a lot of fun. But we're going to start off with a slideshow of the fantastic cats versus dogs drawing that we saw on Facebook and Instagram and in our inbox. These were fantastic. A lot of fun. Indeed. So I'm going to share my screen with you, and then we are going to go through. Open up. Then we're going to go through this slideshow because it was just incredible. So cats versus dog. Juliet shares that um, cats are better hunters than dogs. Dogs are more loyal, and she drew pictures of her of her family's pets. We saw several things about who can jump the highest, and the consensus was that cats can definitely jump higher than dogs. And then the, I have to say, in terms of who's better, dogs or cats, we probably saw just a little more dog entries, but they were definitely split split down the middle. I thought this one had great details with the fish in the aquarium, and then fighting over a fish. I loved this one with the pirate dog ship and the rich cat yacht. Yeah, the pirate dogs. It's, it's, it's going to be a movie one of these days. <laughs> yes. And then cats in space, astronaut cats, and castronauts, I, I think would be a fun way to say that, and dog astronauts. <laughs> this was another space one, a collage that I thought was fabulous. I loved this cat. I thought it looked a little bit like Poutine the cat, super cute. And then this poem was just wonderful. My cat is the best. He really, really likes to rest. Tuna is his favorite food. He's always in a lazy mood. He likes my cuddles, does not like puddles. My cat is my friend. This is the end. These pictures, portraits of the dogs, I thought were wonderful. And I do agree that dogs tend to be more cuddly than cats. I think this is true. We had super dogs and super kitties. <laughs> I thought this little, little battle scene here was really fun. <laughs> This digital art just bowled me over. I thought this was amazing. Two cats and a dog. My prop cat would probably win because my cat hisses. My dog gets pretty scared. And I thought this one was fun because it really depends on the dog and cat you have. They have different personalities. Well, there's such a big size difference between like a big dog and a small there dog. There is. I love this one too. Longest tail, fetch and jump. This was a beautiful portrait. A cat dragon versus a night dog. And Super Kitty saves kittens from trees or buildings. The lazy dog does not. So here we have a super cat. And I love chihuahuas too because they're, and I thought it was cute. He said they're tiny and they yip. And a reminder that mountain lions are cats too, which is true. Ballet dogs and yoga cats. <laughs> <laughs> Loved this one. It's raining cats and dogs. And I loved the the hark hearkening back to Egyptian and what um, Egyptians thought about cats. I thought that was fabulous. Dogs will win because they have better technology. <laughs> <laughs> cats protecting owner versus dogs protecting owners. So the cat will run away. The dog will defend. I thought that was a good point. This portrait I thought was wonderful. Beautiful, beautiful dog. Man. And I loved this portrait of their cat. Isn't that a cute cat? So there you have, and I have to say, when we were going through doing the slideshow, I had this fear that the slideshow wasn't really working, but I couldn't check because we were had the full screen. So hopefully that worked. Please give us a little yes in the chat if you were able to see all the pictures and it wasn't just us staring at the screen or just <laughs> one picture that never moved. Give us a quick yes if it worked. Um, yeah, I've got to say that. It's a really interesting question. So, like big dogs to small dogs, I mean, it's such a big difference. When I think of cat, cats, I think of a house cat. But with cats, you actually have 
every bit as much variety if you're willing to consider things like lions and tigers all the way down all the way to up. It's house true. cats. The, although the, the consensus in the in the pictures was that cats are smarter. That definitely came through again and again. And then dogs are more loyal and more cuddly. So, so there's sort of this interesting power dynamic because it's like the cats are the bosses of their pet humans. The dogs are the pets of their boss humans was kind of what I was getting from a lot <laughs> of the pictures, which was really fun. <laughs> now, let me show you real fast. And I just want to say thank you again for putting in your drawings because this thread in particular was so much fun for us to look through. We loved seeing your art. And where were they submitting those drawings? So you can submit the art on the Facebook page and that's the that's the best way to share it if you have Facebook. If you don't have Facebook, you can put it on Instagram. And if you don't have any social media, Facebook or Instagram, you can um, you can send it to us directly using the email, but it's easier for us to look through and other people can enjoy it if you put it on Facebook or Instagram. So that's the Science Moms Yeah, page. the Science Mom page. And here is our drawing prompt for tomorrow and over the weekend. So if you share in the comment of that page or if you tag us on Instagram, draw someone with that you know and or some famous person, give them crazy new hair and then write a clue or two and see if people who can guess who it is. So if you make a drawing of someone, but their hair looks nothing like what it looks like in real life, and I can I can bet we're going to get some good ones of you. That's what? what I'm thinking. <laughs> um, it's not so that's alter my that's the drawing prompt for for this weekend. That's going to be a challenging one because I think hair is often the the distinguishing feature. It is. I, sometimes my students change their hair and they come in and say, like, "Do I know you?" And <laughs> So I, I think that's what I use as my visual cue for who somebody yeah, is. So, the, so those clues will have to be good. Yeah. And then today, so we introduced our Ready, Set, Draw. We are going to answer yesterday's math mystery. And then we have a series of games and challenges. And we have a cool Desmos activity, which we're really excited about. Sometimes I think we put play and learning into two separate boxes. Like they're two different things, but I really think they go hand in hand. So we're excited to play some fun games with you today, show you some great games that you can that you can enjoy. But first, Math Dad wants to say a thing or two about the lesson from yesterday. That's right. So yesterday we had the, the 12 days of Minecraft. The, we're talking about the 12 days of Christmas and the, the way that song works. And of course, the, the way that it works is on the first day of Christmas, so on day number one, the number of gifts is one. So first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge and a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. So that was three gifts. There were two turtle doves plus one partridge in a pear tree. Pew. All right, on day three, then there's three French hens, two turtle doves, and one partridge in a pear tree for a grand total of six. On day four, there's all six gifts that were given before plus four more new gifts. It was 10. On day five would be 15. So each day in this song, we're giving more and more gifts. It's not just one more, it's all the gifts that were given before plus some number of new gifts. And we had seen this pattern before in our Minecraft staircase problem. And we called these the triangular numbers and we found a formula for them. But then yesterday's, in yesterday's question, we were talking about uh, the total number of gifts that had been given at each stage. So, on day number one, the total number of gifts is one, but by day number two, I've got to combine the first two days. So that would be four gifts. Day number three, the total number of gifts is 10, because I've got to combine all the gifts from the first three days. By day number four, we're up to 20. So we're just adding up these triangular numbers, and then all the way up to 35. And yeah, we're getting this sequence of values. So one of the questions that I asked involved finding the total number of gifts for the entire song, all 12 days of Christmas. And got my comments covered here. Let me, um, so I'm seeing some good numbers in there. I'm seeing 78, I'm seeing 364, lots of different numbers be, being conjectured. Okay, 
Now, the thing was, I believe 78 will be the number of gifts on the 12th day of Christmas, but it's not going to be the total number of gifts because if we want to get the total number of gifts, we actually need to add all of this column up. And we'd even come up with a formula for this column. Um, but uh, do, you, do you want to say just a, a bit about the mistake you made yesterday? Yeah, yeah, uh, let me point that out. So uh, yesterday, well, we wanted to know what n was. We actually knew the answer for this from a previous day. It was n times n plus one, all divided by two. And then I tried to write down a new formula for these pyramidal numbers, we call them, n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. I guess sometimes they're called the tetrahedral numbers. Uh, and can I just say? All divided by 6. It's, it's a little challenging to be teaching a lesson live, knowing that you're being broadcast to thousands of people, and write on a whiteboard and talk at the same time. So as soon as we finished, Math Dad realized what he'd done, and he was like, don't. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> that's right. Well, it wasn't the worst mistake I've ever made as a teacher. That, that, that's for sure. All right. So yesterday I wrote this formula down saying, yeah, this is the answer. And then I plugged in these numbers in this column to test this formula. But the column and the formula didn't match up. I actually hadn't written the numbers down <laughs> for the new question. So th this formula here will actually give us the answer for day number N. So in particular, uh -oh, and I, I didn't actually crunch this in advance, and when n is 12, we would get 12 times 13 times 14, and that's all going to be divided by 6. So then comes the question, what is 12 times 13 times 14? 2 times 13 is 26. All right, 26 times 14 is going to be 264, 364, which is indeed the answer that we had seen earlier in the comments. So the total number of gifts given in the entire song is 364. So kudos to those who have written that number as the answer. And then of course, the beautiful thing about having an actual formula for it would be that we could actually, what if, there, what if there were 13 days of Christmas? What if there were 100 days of Christmas? Or 365 days of Christmas? I mean, that would be a lot of gifts. But a formula will actually give that to us. And of course, the connection to uh, Minecraft was th this idea that each day was like adding a new step. So uh, we had a, a 3D picture, and we were, we were building a pyramid. So here's a, we had a staircase with just one block. Kind of needs to be a 3D picture, but then we needed a staircase with two, well, of height two, and that uh, I'm not. I'm not going to try to draw it. I, th I think you would laugh at me, and you probably wouldn't understand my attempt anyway. 3D drawings are hard, which is one of the reasons I've been so impressed with the artwork that comes in, is because the kids keep consistently outperforming my art skills, and I. I would love to be a better artist um, because I, I, I would come in handy all the time as a teacher. And I, I keep saying that, but then I don't practice. And guess what? I'm not getting any better. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a lesson to be learned here. Maybe. We're going to get to see some of your art skills in just a little bit. Oh, boy. Okay. So we now have... Oh, well, wait, there's, oh. A, there's another half to my question. Oh. Oh, and the, I'd forgotten. What day of Christmas, or what, what gift got given the most times? Because remember, we had... Oh, that's right. Yeah, so we had... Oh, boy, wait, can I, can I give a guess before you answer it? Yes, what's your guess? I didn't have time to, like, really crunch it, but I think either the five or sixth day is going to have the most. Okay. That's, that's my guess. Okay, so that's not, not a bad guess. Science Mom thinks it's day five or day six. So we, say, we had 12 drummers drumming, 11 pipers piping, 10... Lords of leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids of milking, seven swans of swimming, six geese of laying, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. <clears throat> so, all together for the, uh, let's just turn this so you can see. All right, so the day one gift, the partridge in a pear tree, well, there's one gift and it's given 
12 times for a grand total of 12 of those. The day two gift, so there's two of those and they're given out on 11 different days for a grand total of 22. On day three, there were three gifts and those will be given out on 10 different days. So there's 30 of those French hens. Four, day four, we've got four times nine. I think you're seeing a pattern here. The This column, the numbers are going up by one and this column, they're going down by one because the number of days is different for each gift. We've got 36. Day number five, ooh, our golden rings. Five times eight is 40. Day number six, we've got six times seven is 42. Day number seven, ooh, so there's seven gifts given out six times, also 42. Day eight, I've got eight times five. Oh, it's, kind of, it's kind of just going backwards here. In, in fact, maybe, maybe I'll just write that on the other side. So we had seven times six, eight times five, nine times four, 10 times three, 11 times two, and 12 times one. So you see how I'm using equal signs here? That's one of my pet peeves when my students don't use equal signs. It's like writing an English paper with no verbs, which wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, the equal signs are the, the mathematician's verbs. But all right, so what day, what gifts got given away the most? Aha, that would have been this, this very bottom one. We had 42, and that was the day seven gift and the day six gift. So I was I was almost you, right. You were almost right, yeah. So seven swans are swimming and six geese are laying. So, so the, the swans are swimming and the geese are laying. There were 42 of those. That so. is a lot of birds. In, in, indeed. I hope you've got a big yard or a cage or something. something. <laughs> I'm not sure what they did with all these gifts. I don't know <laughs> either. Yeah. Now, we are going to do challenges next, a challenge and a game. And we're going to do the slime making challenge first, just because um, space-wise, that's going to work out a little bit better. So I'm going to set us up right here and then kind of angle down so you can see this table here where Math Dad and I are going to be. And then here's how it's sort of fun. Um, I have a video called The Science Behind Slime. Can you scoot us, scoot us over just a little bit more? Yeah. And I'm going to ask Science Mom Krista and Emily and Liza to maybe link that in the in the in the chat so that you guys can have that link if you want but if you just look up science behind slime that'll pull up a longer video on slime we're not going to talk a whole lot about the chemistry of slime today what we're going to do is challenge me and math dad to make slime without looking at the recipe i have on patreon i have several little handouts that go along with that slime video including this little book that has the recipe we're just going to tantalizingly leave that book right there, but Math Dad's not allowed to look at it. And then we each have glue. Hold up your little thing of glue. <clears throat> we have glue, we have water. In this cup here, we have contact solution and a bowl. And then we can use baking soda and food coloring if we want. And the challenge is to see who can make the best slime. All right. Are you ready for this Math Dad? Oh, of course I'm ready. <laughs> And then we'll have you guys vote and tell us which one of us made the slime better. So, <laughs> so go. Here we go. Yes. All right. So I will say I've seen that video several times. I've helped her make slime before. <laughs> uh, and I don't remember any, any of the <laughs> um, In fact, I was like, well, get my own thing. I went and got some baking soda out of the cupboard. Like, oh. I'll surprise her. And you know what? I didn't even remember it went in here. I, I, I thought I was just going to make my own ingredient. I was going to add it. So. <laughs> So we don't have to share baking soda. I'll bring mine down. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is this one's water. Yep. Okay. But I'm not telling you how much water you should add. <laughs> it's all up to you. I know what I'm doing. Don't copy me. All right. No, that's all right. Listening for the sound. <laughs> how much trickle did I just hear? <laughs> I always add more later, right? That's yeah. that's, that's that's the idea. So. Or you, you can try singing to distract me, and then you won't be able to hear what I'm doing. 
I'm singing a song. I don't know the words. I don't know the words to this I, song. I was going to make a request for a different I'm one. I'm singing it loud and I'm singing <laughs> it long. But I don't know the words to this song. No, I don't know the words to this song. Ooh, oh, man. You just sing the 12 Days of Christmas. Do you know that whole song? Oh, yeah. I mean, people just love hearing that whole song. Let's see. How does it start? I'm singing a song. I don't know the words. I don't know the words to this song. I'm singing it loud and I'm singing it long. But I don't know the words to this song. No, I don't know the words to this song. Oh, man. Oh, I'm going to pour it all in. I don't know what's happening. I don't think this is what it's supposed to look like. I mean, <clears throat> I know exactly what I'm doing, science mom. <laughs> You're going down. That's what you think. Oh, God, you give me so much water. You tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't have to use all the water. The water was just you can use some of the water. I got a secret ingredient. <laughs> Are you peeking? I want the on the record. Let it be known that she was peeking, trying to learn from my strategy. <laughs> Ah, uh, I, I, I think we know who has to forfeit this contest, who, who, who should be declared the winner, because she can't be peeking, my goodness. <laughs> the, the integrity of the entire system has been called into question. I can't believe that you just added that. <sighs> okay, well, <clears throat> clearly, oh, wait, I've got other stuff I can pour in. Let's... Oh, this is actually, maybe this will thicken it up. <laughs> so It's not, it's like, I'm eating flour. <laughs> if, if, if you haven't seen the, the slime video that we made, glue is a really sticky substance. And it's really just, if you look at it under like a microscope and you were to say, what is it made of? It's made of these long strands that are called polymers because you have repeating units that are stuck together. And then they're all mixed in with water, and there's a lot of water in glue. And when you add your activator, which in our case is contact solution, then you're going to make those cross links form to kind of pull those those long strands together. And I have no idea what um, adding carbonated beverage to glue is going to do to Matt Dad's thing, but I bet it's going to make it more challenging for him. You can just hear the jealousy in her voice there. Why didn't I think of that first? <laughs> But, but now if she does it, she'll just be copying. So she probably will choose not to because she doesn't want to seem like a, a copier, a copycat. Or, but, uh, or I want to have slime that works. One of the two. Oh, I tell you, I tell you. It's, it's rough being so talented. No, no one appreciates my genius. All right. Okay. Now the recipe that I have in my, in my little book up here, I've tested out lots of times and it works really well. And I'm not exactly following that recipe. I'm just trying to get close right now. So I can tell. The excuses are starting already. You guys hear this? I can tell that I need more, more activator. But look, you can see it's starting to change already. It's not as runny as it was before. Mine's as runny as water. <laughs> <laughs> more activator. More. <laughs> Really? And there we go. It's starting to really? starting to clump together. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> so this technically is starting to be slime. It's starting to pull together, but it's going to be a pretty sticky slime. So I want to add just a little more, a little more activator. But first, I'm going to stir it more because sometimes you'll think you need more activator when really you just haven't stirred it enough. Yeah, that's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> More string. I'm singing a song. I don't know the words. I don't know the words to this song. I'm singing it loud and I'm singing it long. But I don't know the words to this song. No, I don't know the words to this song. Supposed, supposed to be all drippy, right? That's. Do you want uh, some of my contact solution? <sighs> what I want is like a third of the amount of water I poured in there. You <laughs> sabotaged me. The cup you, was too big. You, you put the whole cup in? 
No, no but I'll put, put plenty in. Uh, or you didn't give me enough glue. That, that was my problem. Like, was problem. Did she have extra glue? Tell me in the comments if she had extra glue because I <laughs> I think that maybe this was a setup. Hmm. I, I think I think too much water is going to be difficult to overcome. That's what I think. Uh, I tell you, I tell you. All right, should we compare our slime now? Oh, uh, or our slime and our soup? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm seeing some. Yeah, I think I think the people are saying that you might have uh, started with some extra. Some extra, <laughs> some extra glue. Yeah, some extra glue. So, how, how can I compete with that? It was, it was a setup from the beginning. Um, All right, my slime is just a little bit sticky, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put just a little bit of. We can't all be perfect, Jen. It's it's pretty good slime. Though. So I'm gonna put it on the table, and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna knead it a little bit to get it and i think probably oh yeah i definitely want just a little bit more contact solution one of the things that surprised me after science mom put out her slime video was just how popular slime is kids really like slime and not only that sometimes they're really knowledgeable they're like oh yeah i used that recipe and then they did like 12 variations on it i there find that i get this consistency when i do this whereas if you want slime that makes good suction sound then you should use these ingredients and wow there was a whole um yeah a whole like lingo special vocabulary all around slime with that being overactivated or underactivated and it was yeah it was pretty fun to see yeah. One time we went to this homeschool convention where we ha had a booth and we, we were selling a few items. I mean, overall, I think we made about as enough money to pay for our booth there and not to even cover the rest of the trip. But uh, that we had some slime. The kids would come play with it. And there were a few kids that just wanted to talk slime the entire They would just come hang out at our booth and they would talk about slime. This slime, that slime. And yeah. I, I was pretty impressed, and so, but by, by messing around with the slime, experimenting, going with different types, I mean, that is a type of science, especially if that you're writing it down and you're learning from it, then that, that is exactly science. All right, it's time, time for the moment of truth. Can you pick your slime up? Uh, <laughs> nope. No, this I take a bath in this stuff. It's Does your slime bounce? Oh, mine's not pretty, pretty drippy. Oh. So if you like drippy slime, this is a good drippy slime. But if you want it to bounce, we'd need to add a little more contact solution. Yeah, that, that was my problem. <laughs> All right. So we're putting down Science Mom wins for that for that contest. And then if you want to share a couple jokes, I'll clean this up and we can get ready for our game. All right, boy. It's, it's tough to compete when it gets stacked against you like that. But the the, the crowd, they were witnesses. They, they saw what happened. They, <laughs> they know who would have won in a level playing field. Um, all right, people say they, they liked our, our colors there. Christmas theme. Oh, yeah. Mine looked more like Pepto-Bismol or something. <laughs> but, okay. So a question for you. What is a sheep's favorite subject? This one came from, um, was a submission from a viewer named Amy, and I think it's the most excellent joke. All right, what is a sheep's favorite subject? Are there answers on here, too? Yeah, look in the chat, see if anyone, okay. anyone's taking a guess. All right, does anyone know a sheep's oh, favorite subject? Oh, that's a subject? good guess, math. Oh. I like that math. one. Yes, oh, is that the right answer? Nope. The, oh. the answer that Amy submitted was botany, but I think math works great as well. Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so we're gonna say this sheep likes math and botany. I like sheep. Good sheep. Good, good, good taste. All right. What did the buffalo say to his kid when he dropped him off at school? Good luck. I don't know. What, what did the buffalo say to his kid when he dropped him off at school? Be good. I, I love you. Um, bison, bison. Bison. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, 
All right. So, sorry, the, the answer to that last one, bison. Yeah. Bison. All right. So, how do you stop an astronaut's baby from crying? Ooh. Space them out. You, Space. you rock it. <laughs> you rock the baby. You rock, rock the baby. Yeah. Can confirm that does help. Babies like to be rocked. They definitely do. And if you had um, printed out the printout, you will see that we have several, several games listed here. So we have the three challenges that we're doing across the top, and then we have the three games across the bottom. And the first one that we're going to play is Memory Math. So I'm going to have Math Dad come over and kind of explain how it works, and then we'll sit back at the table and set it up, and we'll play just a couple rounds real quick. Um, not might, not they, the full round of the, the game. There, there, there might be a problem here. What's Science the problem? Mom. So I made these memory cards with numbers on them. What I didn't realize is that if you look at them from behind, oh. you might be able to tell uh, what <laughs> number it is. Me, me and my, my brilliant idea to uh, well, let's, use a marker on this. Let's, let's set it up real quick and just do an example so they can see how to play. And then you can make better cards for yourself at home where you can't peek by looking through the back. So let's see. So to do memory math, you want to write the numbers 1 through 19 on the back of index cards or just little pieces of paper like this, but maybe not with such a dark marker. And then you want to write another number 10 because you want to have 20 cards in total. You'll have two numbers of the number 10 and then one of every other number 1 through 19. And it works just like regular memory, only you're trying to find matches up to 20. Did you lose a card? Um. It seemed to stuck together somehow. Did I drop one? I don't know. Can confirm. We lost a card. That's all right. That adds a little extra it's, twist. Oh yeah, that, that, that makes make, it more challenging. Make it extra challenge. Okay, eyes up there. So okay. if we're only looking up there, we can't then actually we can't see pick. our cards. So we're, we're so gonna... I'm picking up a ten and a twelve. Okay, but okay. So to get a match, they I have need to get to, ten and ten. They have to sum to twenty. Yeah. All right. Works. All right. So I'm going to pick. This one, seven. seven, and that one, five. Okay, I'll pick 14 and six. Oh, are you kidding oh. me? I got a match. That means I get to go again. That's, that's what it means, yes. I'm going to pick eight, and did we already have 12? I don't remember. I think we did. I think we did. I think it was the first one I picked up. Ho, ho, ho. All right. And I just get to keep going. Yeah, you get to keep going. All right, we have ten and nineteen. Okay, boy, I should have been paying better attention. All right, this one. Oh, wait, there's, that, there's the two. There, there's, there's the, the missing one. one. Okay. Right. Oh wait, those are two. Okay, so I'll count that as my. No, oh, it was a, a three. Okay, it's a three. It's a three. All right, I don't know where it matches. I'll try this one. Is that a one? That's a two. Oh, that's the two. That's a two. Yeah, okay. Three and two. All right. Um. It's really hard not to look down. I got an 18, and I know that the two's over there, but I kind of looked down and saw that, so oh. we'll put that in the cheating pile. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's your turn again, Matt. All right, all right my, my turn. All right, so i got to hold these up a little closer. All right. One. Here's a one. Oh, was there a 19 already? I don't even remember. There was. I pulled the turn over a 19. Ah, it was this one. 19. Oh. Yeah, that's 19. No, that's 16. It's a 16. It's a 16. <laughs> I don't even remember where I picked this up from. That, that makes it extra hard when you put them down in different places each time. Does it, 11 does the, and 9. Whoa. Uh, the, the advanced version. My goodness. Yeah. 3 and... Are you watching her eyes at home? 13. Is she... Is she <laughs> Your turn. Okay. This one is 19. That's a 19. Can you remember where you put the one? No, it was somewhere on this... Did there? That one? I yeah, know ah. you were close though. Oh man, that's a four. Yep. Okay, so we got four and the 19. 19 and one. And yeah. seven and five. Okay. This one we all know is 10. 
And the this one right here hasn't been picked up before. It's also a 10. 13. Oh, man. And I just picked up a 7. I think it was here. 7 and 13. <laughs> All right. 3 and... Oh, that's a 5. Oh. 5 and... 16. Okay. Close. Okay. Did you just shuffle? No wonder I'm not winning. <laughs> All right. This is another cheater one because it's so hard for me not to look down and then I can totally see through the paper. But 10 and 10, I'm going to give that to Math Dad as a consolation prize and ask him to pick another one. You are a 10, babe. Oh, thanks. All right. All right. All right. So this one, a 4. I need a, 16. I need a 16 at one point. It was. That one? Oh, man. I need the chat open. Is it this one? 17. No, 17. Okay. All right. Five and well, 15. I wasn't looking that time, I promise. 17. I was looking that time because I said it for a And three. It's really hard not to look down. And why don't you just pick up that last one? All right. So this reminds me of uh, when my, my kids were, were young. We, we would play memory. And we got this glass table in the kitchen. One that they figured out, hey, wait a minute. If I just go underneath, I can look and see. And then they weren't very good at sneaking. They were like three years old. They're like, hee, hee, hee. Like I'm watching them, them do this. And they, was, they just thought it was hilarious. It was really cute. It became a game to see like how many times you could look under the table. Yeah. They, right. they definitely improved their game, though. They, they performed much better when they could, could see the answers. It is time for fact or fiction. Oh, we had a good question. Is there a way to do this with multiplication? Ooh, okay. So the difficulty with multiplication is going to be, so you're going to pick your target number. But so, so for example, if you picked your target number to be 30, with the memory cards no, version. No, no. Well, I mean, so, so I mean, oh, so twenty is your target or something. Oh, gotcha. And you're trying to multiply. Well, what what would you pair with the number seven? You can't. Mm, there's not there's not a whole number answer that would work there. You'd have to write in fractions. So you'd have to write out your. Well, you'd have to you'd probably have to deal with fractions in particular, and then you'd have to write out the the cards. So, uh, unless your number has a lot of factors, I mean, you, you could pick something like maybe forty eight has several factors, or 144, and yet you're able to maybe make some choices that, that would let, let, it, let you do it. But boy, vacation, we've got a game later that will work out a, a bit better. So. I'm totally being called out in the chat for cheating. Thanks, <laughs> thanks you guys. But it's it's true, it was really hard not to look down and then I could totally just see the numbers. So yes, I totally cheated in that yeah. game. <laughs> Keep it in your honest here, yep. All right. Oh, we should have you sing the um, Baby Shark song. That's a great song. There was a request for it in the chat. Baby Shark, do 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 do. Baby Shark, do 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 do. Baby Shark, do 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 do. Baby Shark. Is that is that the words? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. And then it goes on forever and ever with like all of the other variations of shark you want to do. So, like I literally have all the yeah, lyrics no. memorized to the whole song. Okay, That's yeah. That's right. You know it. All right, you ready for fact or fiction? Uh, I'm ready. Okay. <clears throat> Fact number one, or statement number one, and then tell me in the chat if it is true or false. Cranberries have pockets of air, and they float in water. Oh, cranberries have pockets. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Cranberries have pockets I'm, of air, and they float in water. True seen, or false? I've seen dried cranberries float, but uh, no, cran cranberries float. I think I've seen this. Is this a, this is a thing? You've, you've made. I've made cranberry sauce before. Yeah, but those dried or those normal. But yes, I can say yes. True. Okay. True, cranberries do float, and it's actually really cool. If you ever have a chance to look up or see a, a picture of a cranberry farm, they flood the fields in when they're ready for harvest to get all the berries up, and then they just kind of like scoop them up into conveyor belts. It's really a cool plant. That yep. is. So, so this is a small plant? Yeah, it's about like a shrub-like plant, and they, they grow in boggy areas that are really wet, and it's beneficial for that, that fruit to be able to float so that it can travel. I would have guessed it was a tree. I didn't even know. Yep, it's a shrub. Fact number, statement number two, Brazil is named after a tree. <sighs> Brazil is named after a tree. The country Brazil is named after a tree. Okay. Uh, so I think I heard somebody mention this, but I just, that might have just been overhearing you guys, and then it doesn't tell me if it's true or false. 
Like I know a Brazil nut is a thing that comes from some tree, but does the tree get named after the country or the country get named after the tree or were they independent? Uh, it sounds plausible, true. It is, but it is not the Brazil nut. The Brazil nut is not the tree that Brazil is named after. Um, when, oh. when, um, yeah, when the Portuguese first came to Brazil, there was a, a tree there called Pau Brasil, which is um, has red a red bark that you can make for a dye and is a really important source of lumber. And that tree was so valuable that, to the Portuguese that they named they named the location there Brazil because it had so many of those trees. But the Brazil nut is a completely different tree. Mm -hmm comes from a completely different tree. How come your glasses are so much less reflective than like, whoa, those are dirty. But I, I have no idea. Yeah. It's a a maybe skill. It's, maybe it's the, like the angle you're looking at too, because you're looking more this way. No, that's true. Maybe the light's just behind me. All right, next fact. 12 people have walked on the moon. Okay, that's a really good question. I have no idea the exact number of astronauts, but I, I know the Apollo program didn't last that long. Uh, 12 sounds like a very plausible number. I almost guess that it's a high number, but uh, so I'm gonna say true. That is true. That is the number of astronauts who have walked on the moon. I was surprised when I looked this up because I was expecting it to be lower, but 12 is correct. It's impossible to breathe and swallow at the same time. I'm pretty sure I can't do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, true. Also true. It is because you, the the way that it works when you swallow, so that you don't like accidentally get food into your lungs. Your the when when you swallow that there's a reflex that goes back and actually closes off your airway, so that the food goes down the esophagus, not into the lungs. I'm I'm glad for that. Yeah. My my understanding is like a horse could because the the, the, the nostril like it's not connected to the. The the, really? Oh, maybe that should maybe that should be a factor fiction. I actually don't know if that's true, but I've heard that and it sounded plausible. I actually want to look that up now and see if like horse and cattle and other ruminants if they have the same. Yeah, if they have that same thing. That would be kind of cool. Hmm. All right, we are now ready for another challenge and game, and our next challenge is a picture puzzle challenge. So I'm going to give a piece of paper to me, piece of paper to Math Dad. We're each going to draw a picture of what we would draw for the prompt for cats versus dogs. And then we're gonna show it to you guys, make sure the other person's covering their eyes and we'll cut it up and then give it to the other person and see if they can reassemble it. So this is a really fun little challenge. If you want to try it, you can take something, you can even, if you don't wanna draw something, you can take a cereal box, cut it up and then see if someone else can reassemble it and make it back like before. So you make your own, your own puzzle. So, Math Dad, here is your piece of paper. Okay. <clears throat> and then I've got my piece of paper. And then we'll turn this view sideways again. And we will grab markers. Sure. And we need to get our stack back. The markers are right down here. Okay. Put that stack back so that we can't see. Sorry, I don't want you copying my artwork. All right, ready? Cats versus dogs. All right, cats versus dogs. Yep. All right. In truth, I'll just be happy if you can tell whether I'm drawing a cat or a dog. No song this time. Oh man, I got to focus here. <laughs> this is taking all I've got. This is way harder than the math challenge, guys. <laughs> so I, I did think of something interesting. I think about cats and dogs, and uh, so somehow cats are just athletic by default. They, they, they can do pretty cool acrobatics. They land on their feet when you toss them, and uh, you chase them, and they, they can run fast. I remember trying that as a kid. I was sure I could catch a cat. To, no, no. I, I, oh, you should tell them about the time that you snuck up on the kitten. Oh, okay. So on my, my grandpa's farm, we had some... Barn cats. Yeah, some cats lived in the barn. And yeah, we 
So, so, so somebody had dropped them off, and the, the parents were actually pretty tame, but then when they had kittens, they wouldn't let us play with the kittens, and uh, it really frustrated me. It's like, wait a minute, I want to... I want to hold a kitten? Uh, yeah. So I, I kept but, trying to, to to do it, but yeah, they, they would just run away Yeah, the kittens, every were, time. The kittens were really wild um, and not at all used to people. Um, yeah. So they, they, they weren't having any of that. So one day, I saw this cat, this little, little kitten, and it was just playing right by the side of these calf pens. So I took this long router and snuck around, climbed up on the calf pens, and had to kind of climb, belly crawl across the top of 10 pens. And oh, I was being so quiet and sneaky. You would have been very proud of me, my, my stealth. So I reached down and managed to pick up this kitten. And I'm so proud of myself well, as I'm you, reaching down. You reached down and... We'll yeah. Snatch it. Yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. Out. It wasn't. It wasn't a gentle grabber. I quickly grab. Like, yay! Like, oh, it will just love this. <laughs> yeah. It, it did not love that at all. And, oh, did it scratch me? I, I think it got both hands. I don't know how it did it so fast, but uh, yeah, that, that, those were real claws, and they, <laughs> they uh, were used with the intent to do some harm. Uh, obviously, I, I let go, and then boy, I had to weeks and weeks for that to heal. And, uh, I do not recommend that strategy to anyone. Yep, don't sneak up on a cat. All right, you're not looking at my drawing, right? No, of course not. I'm, I'm ready to show my drawing to everyone who is watching, and then you need to close your eyes so you don't see it. All right, I'm just going to keep drawing here for a minute. Okay. Oh. So here is my drawing. Cats versus dogs. I like them both. And now I am going to cut my drawing up into puzzle pieces. And then I'm going to hand those puzzle pieces over to Math Dad, and we'll see if he can put my drawing back together. I'm getting, getting close, getting close here. And we're not going to make our puzzle pieces too crazy small and difficult because, um, but if you're doing it at home and you want to be kind of stinky and make it extra challenging, you can make your puzzle pieces real small. That's right. Okay, so here is my drawing. Tried to throw in a bunch of extra detail there so that it's not just a white page, but i um, curious if you can even guess what I'm going for with that. All right. <clears throat> Do you have scissors for me? Or just, um, oh, I, I'll uh, hand them to you in just a second. Uh, I'll, I'll just sing you a song to there keep you, you company. <laughs> no. I'm singing a song. I don't know the words. I don't know the words to this song. Boom, boom. I'm singing it loud and I'm singing it long. But I don't know the words to this song. No, I don't know the words to this song. All right. And then... There's a piece of paper for you, and um, I did see that someone asked in the chat what would happen if you put Mentos into the slime that has Coca-Cola in it because Math Dad poured pop in his slime. So I'm going to ask you to – actually, I can reach down and grab it. I'm going to grab this bowl here. So here is Math Dad's slime, which is totally liquid. And we're gonna drop in a few Mentos. Oh my goodness! And that one splashed on the computer, which is kind of terrible. Oh, it's all right. It was only, only a tiny bit. It's only a two thousand dollar laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens because that yeah. slide is not not carbonated. Yeah, I only put in a, a tiny little bit. Although I, I think we can all agree it probably would have worked and been amazing if I hadn't had <laughs> someone sabotage me by giving me way too much water. Uh, <laughs> It was sneaky. It was, it was well played. Science mom. All right. Okay. So, are you done? Almost. 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 All right. I'm going to remove our little divider here. And just go ahead and I'm going to put these on your paper. Okay. Whoop. And then there's a little cup here that has a little dot of glue in it. And once you get your pictures in place, you can try and glue them a bit. Put 
put just like a little dot of glue on the back. And oh my goodness. So but yours are blank. Wait, wait, okay. So I've got this, I've got this. This is more challenging than I expected. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's probably has something to do with your um artistic skills. Oh, oh I got a match. So jealous. I got a match. Yeah. And now I can't tell where this one goes. Oops. <clears throat> oh no, it's the legs. It's the legs of the dog. All right, I got the dog put together. And it looks like the dog is trying to eat a cat. Uh-oh. <clears throat> and what next? If you if you make a good puzzle, we would love we would love to see it. You should definitely post a picture and tag us, post it to social media and show us ah. your creation. Oh man, you totally won. Yeah. So are you gonna I'm try to glue that back together? Well you can just put like one dot of glue on the back of each one. Okay, all right. And then I will try super fast to get this one finished. Yeah. But I definitely recommend you do a before picture because <laughs> the after picture is going to look uh, lower quality is, is my guess. Although, I mean, I might improve yours. I mean, I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> but, uh, uh, okay, there we go. I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. A secret cutting technique. Truly random. Ah, what in the world? I do that to help you out. It's not very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Is this, oh, it's supposed to be a sun. That's what. But, yeah, I forgot I had different color markers. So it's a blue sun. A blue sun. To help Got you it. out. To help me out. <laughs> very helpful. And, oh, okay, I got it, I got it. Um, and maybe, whoa. All right. Yeah, save, yeah we're, save yours for We're all, all out of glue, but I'll just try and lift it up and show you guys that I got the picture put back together. And so tell us, tell us, Math Dad, is this a, a dog chasing a cat, chasing a mouse? Like, what's going on here? No, it's a giant cat. Chasing a big dog who's chasing a cat. Oh, a cat chasing a dog chasing a cat. So we've got like mountain lion, regular sized dog, little cat. Yeah, if, if, I'd have, ah! if I'd have a bigger page, I would have done a dog chasing that cat. I had a whole tower of them. But And then mine. Oh, uh, yours. There we go. I like cats and dogs. They're both great. <laughs> All right. We have more jokes. We we do have another joke that I will bring up right now, and then we have another game. So if you want to get Target Thirty ready, is our other game. Uh, someone asked, "Are there um, puzzle piece templates?" I bet you could find some online, but just cutting up random pieces is kind of fun too, because then there's a lot of variety. And now we're going to do another joke, and then we're going to grab some playing cards. The next two. Um, if someone tells you you could have used the yellow marker for the sun math dad, you did have a yellow marker. <sighs> yep. Busted. <laughs> Busted. And our next, our next joke is, why is Peter Pan always flying? Why is Peter Pan always flying? Uh. He never lands. Ha! <laughs> okay. That was good. And then our other joke is, what do you call a parrot that flies away? What do you call a parrot that flies away? <gasps> I know it. I know it. What is it? Polygon. That's right. Polygon. I knew that Math Dad would really like that joke. That's a very mathy joke. That's right. So what, what is a polygon? Many-sided figures. So things like triangles or quadrilaterals or pentagons. No. Come just a little bit closer. So this next game <laughs> is one that you can play with a deck of cards. I, I, actually, let's we, we want to do it at the board here, so we can actually write a few things down. So let's oh, okay. Uh, let's do a, the full explanation rotation. at the board, and then yeah. No, we'll, we'll, we'll actually play it here where they can see, and then we'll we'll, we'll show how to score a few rounds. We'll just stand here, and we'll okay. we'll display the cards. So what I did is I got a pack of cards here, 
and I pulled out all the cards that didn't have a number except the aces. So I just wanted numbered cards for this game. And then we're going to pick a target number. And so this one's a little more advanced. We're going to be doing maybe multiplication and subtraction, division. But yeah, you can use anything you want. It's all on the table. But if you if you want, if it's like for younger kids, just use addition and subtraction and take three cards yeah. and try and get, so this one is close, target 30, get as close to 30 okay. as you can. So for our first round, we are going to play to 30. What we're going to do is randomly choose four cards here and then I'm going to try to hold them up, hold the values up so that everybody can see. We have six, seven, so, six, seven. All right. So six, seven, six, seven. Can we move that light? I think yeah. it might light this up better if we change our lighting. All right. So six, seven, six, seven. The goal is to use these numbers to get as close to 30, 30. as possible. So we can choose to add them. We can do some subtraction. We have lots of options here. And there's no one best way of doing it. If you happen to see a good answer, Go ahead and let us know in the comments, although we, we won't wait for too long. All right, so six, seven, six, seven. So I think if we, we just add them. Yep. Okay. So 14 plus 12 equals 28. And that uh, one, 14 plus 12 equals, nope. <laughs> equals what? 20, right. 26. I meant to say 26. All right, so 14, so you can get to 26. Okay, so, that, so that, then, that's, that's pretty good. Now, then my score would be four. Oh. Well, yeah, because so, I'm four away from thirty. That that's that's correct. Okay, so whereas I might look at this and say, "Ooh, why don't we do six times seven? And then I'm going to subtract six and then subtract seven. So that would be forty-two minus six minus seven. So we're down to twenty-nine then. Oh. Oh. Uh -huh. So I would score just one point. And so in this game, it's a, it's a golf scoring game where you're trying to get the lowest possible score. Nicely done, Math Dad. All right, thank you. Let's pick four more cards and do one more. All right. So it, it's one of those games. You could play this solo. You could say, all right, how many rounds can I go before I get my score gets up to a total of 20? Or you can play it as a competition. There are lots of different ways that you could do this. And this time around, so 30 is a good target, but let, let's go ahead and pick... A different number, Jen, or okay. science mom. Yep. What what what's our, what should be our new target? Our new target number, um, just for fun. Target number. Of target number ten. Ten. Okay. And that's the fun thing about this game. You can play with any target number you want. So target thirty is what I wrote down in the um, in the little notes. But you can you can pick any number. You can make them big or small. All right. So our four numbers are seven, ten, eight, and four. Ooh. Okay, so seven, ten, eight, and four, and we're we're after the number ten. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> so ten minus four is six. Eight minus seven is one. So I could get to seven, or ten minus seven is three. Eight minus four is four. Three and four gives me seven. Hmm. I'm 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 gonna go with that one. That one's gonna be my guess. So I'm gonna say ten minus seven plus eight minus four. So that gives me ten minus seven is three plus eight minus four is four. So I get seven, which means I have a score of three because I'm three away from ten. Now I'm curious okay. to see. So, so, so that's with us playing that you have to use all four numbers. Yes. Another variation would be that you well, can choose. Let's save that for the next game. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So you have to use all four cards in this game. Okay. So do I see a better way of doing that? Uh, wasn't thinking too much. Uh, if you would allow decimals, I would do like <laughs> eight times four is thirty-two divided by ten is three point two plus seven is ten point two. Oh my goodness! That's that's pretty close. That is pretty but, uh, close. Nicely done. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm th there might be a better way of doing it. I'm seeing ooh, ten times four divided by eight. 
plus, um, seven. plus seven. Nice. I'm seeing some really fun answers in the in the chat. A lot of good possibilities here. So this game this game is quite a bit of fun. Target 30, and in the original instructions for target 30, since it's aimed just a little bit younger, we said just take three cards, use them all, try to get to 30. That's, but the there really is, like, the sky's the limit with what you can do. You can pick as many cards as you want. You can change the target. You can say you have to use all the cards or just a few of the cards. There, there are a lot of fun possibilities here. So it's a great way. Great way to play, play a little game and improve your, improve your math skills at the same time. That's right. And someone got 10. Awesome. Wait, how'd you get 10? I didn't even see it. I'm seeing someone saying, what about science? I need science. Um, watch the science of slime video. That will give you some science. And I'll ask Krista or Emily to, or um, Liza to drop that link in the chat. And it's going to be linked in the description as well. So you can watch that when you yeah, finish. Yeah, trying to explain why does slime work? Why does slime work? Why, why, cool, why are there those ingredients? Yeah, there's some cool chemistry there. All right, next we are going to play What's in the Bag. Okay, um, I'm, I'm also going to throw up a little banner here. We're, we're going to do some activities on a website called Desmos, and I actually, as a, at home, you can participate. If you go to this website, you're actually able to, to work on the problems there, and then uh, it, it'll we might, be interactive. I, we'll be able we to see your see work, and, and we'll be able to show that. However, if you don't, Go to that website or, or don't want to use it you don't you don't have to because they, they can be done at home you just won't be able to share your work on the live show okay. um, i'm going to turn this around real quick okay. and i, I will and say then, yeah at that website it, it asks you to yeah. to join and Learned you can choose to log way. in or not that's entirely up to you yeah the login is completely optional so if you want to join us for the next little activity after we do what's in the bag just go to that website, click on the code, and if you want to just watch as we as we go through these fun four little activities, that's just fine too. But now, Math Dad, I have what's in the bag clues for you. See if you can figure it out. All right. I'm served at the table. Okay, it's it's salt. It's not salt, although it is always small and often white. It's sugar. It's not sugar. I'm served at a table in gatherings of two or four. Wait served a minute, wait a served at a table in gatherings of two or four, always small, wait a minute. So often like white. Not, not three people, but two or four. Yep, two or four. Ooh, we're getting some great suggestions here. Napkin, salt, nope. Not napkin or salt, not a plate. Two or four. Wait. Often white, always round. Bread is a good guess too, not bread. Served at a table in gatherings of two or four, Always round, often white. <sighs> People have fun with me. Competition is involved. Uh, da, 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 da. It's, that's so quick. It's ping pong. It is. It's a ping pong ball because a ping pong ball is served at a ping pong table and always in gatherings of two or four because you have either two people playing ping pong or in a doubles tournament, you'll have four people playing ping pong. And it is always round, but not always white. Often white, but sometimes you have orange ping pong balls or other colors. That was a good one. <laughs> so yes, ping pong ball. <laughs> that is our what's in the bag. And now we are going to head over to Desmos. And if you guys have never seen Desmos before, oh my gosh, we've got some really fun Desmos things that we've put on the Science Mom YouTube channel before. And it's like the coolest... I don't know, what would you say it's like? Like world's coolest graphing calculator? I don't I don't know how to describe Desmos. You can do lots of stuff on Desmos. Yeah, you, you definitely can. So now I'm a little worried that, I, I hope everybody is seeing this. In, yes, it says it's sharing. All right, so what we see here is the, the website. It's called student.desmos.com. And you don't have to create an account. You can just log in. And to, but to join this particular activity, you have to use that six letter. So six E K K S N. And if you're, if you're not on yet and you want to be, just take a moment, write down the, that code six E K K S N, and hopefully others can post it in the chat as, as we move on. 
All right. And we, oh my goodness, we have 236 people who have joined. What you're seeing here is my, my teacher dashboard. And I'm seeing a lot of responses here. Um, so the, the question on this particular screen was about what is your mood for the day? Are you feeling energetic or tired or are you feeling negative or positive? And then I'm asking you to drag this point around to show where you fell. What I see back on the screen where there were lots of people maybe trying to explain where they were at. Uh, clicking around. So some people are almost asleep. I'm the mom. I love being at home. I'm tired but positive. <laughs> ah, some of us are awesome. sick. Yeah, we're getting lots of, of good responses there. And I'm seeing that dot all over the place. And in fact, let's see. Oh, I know what I needed. The overlay option. So if I click on the overlay, I should be able to see. Oh, look, look, look at, at that. that. So this is all of your responses put together in one graph and updated as new responses come in. So I am happy to see that most everybody is feeling positive. That's wonderful, especially considering all the stress that we have going on right now. And then it looks like we're pretty evenly distributed with energetic, with energy, you know, a lot of people energetic, a lot of people tired. And then those of you who are on the negative side of the spectrum, big hugs, if we were allowed to do like virtual hugs, hope you feel better <laughs> soon. That's right. Okay, well, cool. We've got 405 people who have joined. So that, that code, one more time, is 6EKKSN. So we're at student.desmos.com. And it's, it's okay if you don't join that. We'll get to some activities that won't require you to, to participate, but, oh, you wanted the picture of that? Yeah. No, not that. Oh. The, the graph. Oh, the graph. Yeah, you want the graph. Yeah, it looks yeah. so cool. It, it, it does. Yeah, I, I, I love seeing people chime in and be, being honest. I guess a lot of us are exhausted. I, yeah, I, 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 I would definitely be down on the feeling positive but feeling very tired spectrum. That's me. That's right. So, it, Mathematicians get, give a name to each of these quadrants. This upper right quadrant we call quadrant one. Upper left is quadrant two. The bottom left is quadrant three. And then quadrant four is the bottom right. Quadrant four, that's me right now. <laughs> that's right. But hey, look, we've got like a little, like a line, kind of a scatter plot you know, going the, on the, quadrant the, there, four. There is quite a trend going on there. So That's awesome. Yeah, so, but, but I, I, I do like that so many people are feeling positive. And I hope we're having a good experience while we're at home in such large numbers. All right. So what you may have noticed is that each of you has been assigned a name of, an, of a famous mathematician. So th th there's a, some name appearing on the activity. And uh, you probably don't recognize a lot of those names. Ho hopefully there are enough names to go around. I anonymized it so people wouldn't actually see who was... Uh, saying what, because I, I didn't want to display people's work without their permission. All right, so that being said, we are going to attempt to expand this. Uh oh, yeah, it's not what I meant to do. Is that right, Math Dad? Everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> All right, so. Let me try that one more time. All right, I'm gonna to go to pacing, and I'm going to select the screens. All right, no. Nope. Okay, so I'm gonna get ask you to, we're moving on to some new, new screens here. So on this particular screen, I've got a, a problem I want to show you. So what you're gonna be seeing here is the setup to the problem. I have a triangle, and then for the first step, I draw a line joining the midpoints, and I color in that upside down triangle. Next, I look at the, the bottom two triangles, and in those, 
I join the midpoints, creating an upside down triangle. We shade it in. We're going to keep repeating that on all the triangles that, that touch the bottom edge. We're going to shade these upside down triangles, and that's going to give us a figure that looks like that. So this one was kind of fun to code in. And then on the next screen comes a question. And that question is what portion of the big rectangle, uh, rectangle, the big triangle, triangle is shaded? <clears throat> so yeah, what, what, what fraction got shaded? It's clearly not all shaded, it's just partly shaded. And yes, yeah, maybe, maybe not obvious how to figure out that answer. But I'm going to leave this problem up for a few minutes and, and then have you guys try it. And yeah, for, for sake of time, we're going to need to go through these a little more quickly than maybe you'd want to if you were doing them on your own. But, but yeah, de de decimals activities are tons of fun. So let's, <clears throat> my, my guess, and I've done this one before, but I don't remember. That's right. This one, this one was a math dad versus science mom challenge. This is our very yeah. first one, actually. Was it, was it a third? Or a quarter? No, it wasn't a quarter. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we're going to give them a minute. We're going to let them think about it because at home, draw it out on paper. Yeah, so see if you can come up with the right answer here. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds more. All right. All right, so what are we seeing as answers here? Oops. So, oh man, I'm not even hitting the right tool here. There, every, I'm seeing a lot of people, right, about 50%, about half. Yep, you are absolutely correct if you're saying one half. So how do I know that half of it is shaded? That's the obvious question. And the answer to know how, how much is shaded is that if you look at the shape, it can be broken up into a bunch of diamond shapes. It, it seems to be moving a little bit slower for us just because we are live streaming. Well, and... not, not only that, but I, I think we have the problem of, we have 644 students logged in here. <laughs> at once. Maybe the software doesn't know how to handle it. That's <laughs> very interesting. So, uh, I can't actually draw it, but if you look at it, there are a bunch of diamond shapes, and each of those diamond shapes is halfway shaded. The bottom half of each diamond is shaded, and all together then, that makes half of the total figure shaded. All right, so I have now opened up screen number four for you to try out. On screen number four, what you see is a shape here, a yeah, cross. cross shape. And the challenge on this screen is to shade exactly one fourth of the figure. So if you're drawing it at home, get out that pencil and paper. See if you can draw or manage to shade exactly one fourth of this figure. So one more time, if you're joining late, so you're going to student.desmos.com and you're typing in 6EKKSN. And then that'll let you get in and do, do all these activities. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys one minute. And if, if you manage to come up with a solution here, see if you can come up with another solution. Because there are multiple right answers, but I have to say when Math Dad first showed this to me, I was like, oh, I'll just like draw lines so that they're all boxes. And then I was like, wait a minute, there are five boxes and I need a fourth. Ah. Uh-oh, what do I do now? Yeah, that was the trap. I don't, the way my screen looks here, I actually only get to, I've got to squeeze everything into the bottom half. We, we should have used the bigger computer for, for this activity. Then I would have had room to do things, but. All right. All right. I'm, I'm really curious to see the answers. I bet there, okay. I bet there are a lot of them. So there, you want to see this? The, so the answers we're getting here? The, Oops, or the summary. The summary one. 
Yeah. Yep. Didn't add any snapshots. Um, where? Show me. Where? Uh, oh. right, it's it's, it's kind of <laughs> going slow here. I'm I'm surprised. All right. Okay, so I'm seeing some. Oh, nice. Ah, this, this an L of, shape. Yeah, the L shape is a great solution that totally works. A lot of people came up with Ooh, the L. And, and the little cross dissection, too, because you can cut right. it in, in cross. Yeah, so look, a little house that gets shaded. Make an X in the middle. Awesome. Ah. Four equal triangles. Love it. Good job, yeah. you guys. Yeah, yes, indeed. Those are all great ways to split it in half. <laughs> yeah. Boy, looks like the... I'm trying, attempting to scroll my screen, and I'm not succeeding very well here. You know, we we if, have exceeded the capacity. But if this is slowing down, then it'll probably be affecting the stream as well. So we should probably, we should probably close out. All right. Um, well, I'm going to ask my my science moms. Tell me if things are starting to go slow or or freeze, just because we're using, um, we're using the internet, and we don't have our our plug in our Ethernet yet. So. All right. So it says the stream is perfect. So oh, the good. stream is working. It's just good. the website we're visiting is wasn't displaying down. the teacher dashboard as well. So uh -huh. good to know. I'm glad to hear that. All right. Then I'm going to. Okay. So I'm going to move us on to the next screen. Uh, but, but basically, the, there were some great solutions. You, you kind of needed to, to draw the lines so that they would go through the center. And I bet you could come up with several good solutions. All right. So. Attempting to get it to move to the next screen. Mm. And it, if, if we've if we've overloaded Desmos, where it's like, help, we've never had six hundred plus people all log in at the same time on the same activity, <laughs> then we could just we can pause it, and you guys can do five and six on your own later. Um, all right. Yeah, let's go ahead and because we have another challenge and another um, all right so game to do as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to. To, to pull the plug on this, maybe I'll be able to open it up later. If you've logged in, you'll be able to access your work later. If if not, you could always just restart. That code is is valid. All right. So, are we back on? That the... was we are we All are. Right. That was that was really fun to see. Thank you, those of you who hopped over. Um, and it looks like about about a third or so of the people watching hopped over to the Desmos. And thanks for joining us there. That was really fun to see your solutions and play around with that. And now we're ready for our next challenge. So our next challenge is a fun one. This is blind folded drawing. And so okay. blindfolded drawing. I'm going to, so we're gonna do the same thing here that we did before, where we'll move over so that we're sitting at the table and we'll set up those little blocks. So Math Dad and I can't cheat and see what the other person is drawing. So what, what is it that we are drawing? So we're going to we're going to pick, we're going to draw a word and hold it up so that you guys can see what the word is that we're going to draw. And then we're going to close our eyes, draw it, and see if the other person can guess what we drew. So there's your word and my word. And I need to find you Sorry. a piece of paper. All right. So all right, so here okay, I'm closing my is eyes. the item that I will be drawing. Okay. All right. Okay, and here is what I'm going to be drawing. All right. Close your eyes, Math Dad. Did you hold it up and show them? That's what I'm doing right now. Oh, okay. This is what I am going to draw. And now we're both, no cheating, we're both going to completely close our eyes and draw our pictures. All so, right. okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm closing my eyes so that I don't even know. Hopefully, I pick the right colors. Colors? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. I'm not ready yet. We can't all be superstars. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
a, it's a tricky challenge. I think it's a hard enough challenge when my eyes are open, but with my eyes closed, this, this is a whole level deeper. Uh, is she even trying? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right. I'm done. Um. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So Let's, I, I think we should come back, come back over here, so that we can okay. show them a little bit better. So we're going to turn the view back this way, and um, him. I'm going to go first. So, Math Dad, can you guess what I drew here? Oh. So I will point out that there is obviously a round blue object with things on top I, of that round I, blue I, I object. Know, I know what it is. I know what it is. You know what it is. What this, is it? This, so this is a plate of spaghetti. Yes. Spaghetti and meatballs. Don't you see the meatballs? The, the, see? the meatballs. The, yeah, yeah. That's spaghetti a, and meatballs. Without the meatballs, I don't think I would have gotten it. But uh, okay, okay. So the colors actually help in your. I, uh, without the colors, I probably wouldn't have figured that out. <laughs> All right. All right. Here is what I drew. A candle. It's a candle. All right. Yeah, I got the nice. flame right. Yes. You did. You did. The top of the candle looks kind of like there's something sitting on it. Yeah, that was supposed to. Yeah. But the, the nicely done. So that is that is our third little challenge that is quite a fun game to play. And then our our other game is really similar to the one that we did before, um, the take 30 or go for 30. But this time, we're going to draw more cards. And then you don't know what your target is. It's the fifth card that you draw that is your target. And so we'll swing back to the right whiteboard. And I think, Math Dad, you should get a marker. I should get a marker. And we'll make this a legit challenge as well even though it's our game, and see who can, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see we'll see who can win. Spoiler alert, it's gonna be Math Dad. He's way better at this than I am. Oh. All right, so I'm just gonna, you're gonna want, want to write these numbers down on the yeah. board? Yep, I'll right. write them down on the board. All right, so I'm gonna draw. And I'm also gonna get, get our laptop up on the books so it's a little bit higher and they have a better view hopefully a better view of the, the whiteboard. All right, write these numbers down. Okay. All right, two, five, five, three, and the target number is three. Oh boy, so here's how this works. You have, oh and man, I wrote that almost a little bit too high. There we go. So our target number is three, and you have to use at least two of these numbers, but you can use more than two. And then when you're playing this with cards, you say your solution and whoever says it first. And if your equation is correct, then and you get exactly three because you're not just trying to get close to three. You have to get exactly three. Then you get to take all the cards and let's see. We're going to play play around and we'll see how it goes. So uh, I, mean, I see the answer. But all right. Tell us the answer. Well, there's, there's lots of gonna... good answers here. But yeah, maybe if you did five plus three minus five. That's easy. That, that would get, yeah. This one ended up so, being easy. So then Math Dad would get to take the three and the two fives and the three. He would take all those cards, we'd put the two back under the deck, and we'd lay them out again. And then at the end of the game, whoever has the most cards is the one that wins once your deck runs out. I like that. So let's, um, let's get the eraser and we'll do another round. So just to keep score here, Math Dad has four cards. I'm going to write. Math Dad up here. So you've got four cards. Science Mom. We'll see if I can get any cards. I'll be proud of myself if I do. And we'll do we'll do one more one right. more round here. All right. So we've got as our numbers. Oops. Five cards. Eight. Eight. Seven. Seven. Six. Six. Two. Two. And then the target number is a one. Oh, target number is one. All right. All right. So I could just say eight minus seven is one as fast as I can, and then I would get to get those two cards, you know, the two and the, uh, and the third. But if Math Dad says one that uses more cards, then, you know, if oh, you could then say... Oh, then I can steal it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so I say 8 minus 7 equals 1, and Math Dad has just a few seconds. If he can say an equation that uses more, then he gets the cards. Gotcha. gotcha. Uh, but your time's running out. Like 10, 9, 8, so 7. 6 plus 2 is 8, and then divided by 8 is 1. Oh, nuts. So then he would get one, two, three, four. He would get those four cards. So now his score would be eight, and I would be still at zero. But that's all right because I like Math Dad. I'm happy to have him win math <laughs> games. All right. 
So I hope you enjoyed those challenges and those math games. And now I have kind of some, some unfortunate news. Math Dad has like four hours of meetings today that he has to go to because he has a, a full-time job teaching, <laughs> teaching at a college. And so we actually have to end a little bit early today. But I, um, I, I'm premiering a new video and I thought it would be sort of fun if we went and watched it all together. We're testing this out and then if it works, next Friday we'll have some longer videos to premiere. And the fun thing about a premiere is that there should be an active chat over on YouTube and you can watch the video with us and, and chat as the video plays. So they go to youtube.com slash science mom. mom. And then the first video that you see, um, how to think like a scientist, it's kind of a short video. It's only a few minutes long, but that video is part of a series of videos that I did with a school in Texas. And they're, they're putting that series online next week. And it's a free series that anyone can do. And I'll be helping with helping with that. And so I wanted to introduce the first video. Yeah, I will. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll ask um, Krista and Emily and Eliza, my other science moms, if you guys can drop the link, um, then, then right. we'll head over there because it's going to so start a, in three or four, four minutes. minutes. So it'll start at 930. So we're going to end right at 929. So that then we can go 929 Pacific. So then we can go over and watch that premiere together. But we'll take just a couple questions before we do. But first, I'm going to grab one of these blocks so that I don't have to be leaning over to look at the chat. We'll lift that up. So a few quick questions. And I will say, if you would like to submit a question, and if you felt frustrated you know, that you're trying to type questions, but the chat is going so fast that we're not seeing your questions, if you head over to my Facebook page, I made a post specifically to gather questions. So if you have questions, post them here and then upvote your favorites. And the ones that have more votes, we will definitely make time to answer those in future quarantine episodes. And then I also did a poll on Patreon because I would love to get your feedback. Now that you've seen a week of this, tell us what you would like more of, tell us if you have any suggestions, and especially give us feedback on the length because we've heard from some people saying two hours is too long and they would like it to be shorter. And we would love to hear from you. What length do you want quarantine to be? So we made a poll and you can vote for two hours, hour and a half or one hour. And we'll, we just wanna get your feedback and then we'll use your feedback to design um, things for the next several weeks. And we're gonna keep this going. So Monday through Friday next week, we'll, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. And we will, Amy asked if we can talk about genetics. We will definitely be doing some things about genetics. I'm really excited. We're going to sort of take this tour through science. We're going to start out with chemistry, and then we're going to cover several different branches of science. Um, I've seen this question a lot. How old are you? And I saw some people saying that we were boomers, <laughs> and that made me laugh. My parents are boomers. I'm not a boomer. Um, <laughs> I am, oh no, how old am I? I'm 38 or 39? You're 38. I'm 38. And I'm 39. Math dad's 39. You know you're old when you have to sit and think about how old you are. This is true. This is true. All right, we'll answer just a couple more couple more questions. Can we talk about air pressure? We definitely will. So questions like this, these are such great questions. Um, if you can put those in that post on Facebook, then we'll be able to like even make some cartoons to address them. We'll be able to take a little more time and then we can address the questions. So somebody was asking, what if we don't you don't have Facebook? So you can reach us set. So that's just for you, Math Dad. Jenny at science.mom, and we're just way behind on that inbox, so we'll be looking on, we on are. Facebook first. So, but. And we will start doing more pictures, too. I'll, I'll tell you just real quick. So here's what we want to do next week. Oh, man, it's almost time. Actually, we, we'd better Go fast. just quit. Um, we, it's been such a scramble for us to get this ready day by day. Over the weekend, we're going to build out the drawing prompts in advance so you have time to post the pictures earlier, and then we'll be able to grab more of them. Because I got I got so many more ones that came in this morning, just 10 minutes before we started it. And I don't have time to get the pictures into the stream if it's that soon. We've yeah. got to go because our premiere is starting. But thank you so much for joining us this week. Don't forget to head over to Patreon and answer the poll. Tell us how long you want quarantine to be and leave a comment to give us feedback for what you would like to see. And if you don't want to leave feedback on Patreon, you can always send us a message. We have loved sharing this with you and just want to say thank you again for joining us.